Hello, welcome back. All right, so we talked about aphanitic and phaneritic textures. Those are kind of the more common igneous textures. Not that they're super uncommon, but let's talk about some other ones. So we have porphyritic texture. This is kind of an interesting one because it's uh, um, a porphyritic igneous rock is considered both intrusive and extrusive. It has both characteristics. Characteristics. The reason being it be, is because it has two phases of cooling. So initially, the molten rock magma is beginning to cool below ground, um, creating you know bigger crystal grains, bigger mineral grains. However, for some reason, maybe there's another push from below, and that magma, instead of cooling below ground, gets pushed up and is extruded and comes out of a volcano. Well, then the rest of it cools very quickly. So you already have this material that's beginning to cool with bigger mineral grains coming out and cooling, and the rest of it has smaller mineral grains. So, so porphyritic rocks kind of have a, a, a mixture of both big visible mineral grains that you can see and smaller ones you can't see with your naked eye. Um, some example of porphyritic rocks include andesite porphyry, rhyolite porphyry. And so again, it's kind of a mixture. Of, of porphyritic rocks have kind of a mixture of cooled initially below ground and the rest cooled above ground. And the, the visible pieces that you can see, the mineral pieces that cool below ground that you, you can see are called phenocrysts. Uh, and the rest of it is just called the, the matrix. So here, uh, andesite porphyry, you can see the, the bigger black mineral grains, and the rest of it is you can't visibly see the crystals. Rhyolite porphyry, you see the lighter gray stuff in this kind of red matrix, which you can't really distinguish different minerals within the, that red matrix. Um, some more igneous rock textures now. Uh, we have pyroclastic textured igneous rocks. This is when rock fragments produced and ejected by explosive volcanic eruptions kind of rain down and they're kind of consolidated and, and squished together. Um, can be ash that has settled or other larger kind of uh, pieces of rock and material that have been exploded out of a volcano. Examples of this type of igneous rock, uh, it's an extrusive igneous rock, so um, some examples are tough and welded tough. Volcanic breccia is another one. The secular igneous rocks have vesicles. They have little holes. Um, and that's the result of gas traps in the molten rock at the time of, of solidification. So you, some magma or lava you know, has extra gas in it, and if the material begins to cool, then those little air bubbles or water vapor bubbles or carbon dioxide bubbles kind of get uh, uh, sealed off in there. So it's also associated with quick cooling on the surface. Examples of vesicular igneous rocks, uh, scoria and pumice. They have vesicles or holes. So here's a good example of a pyroclastic rock that's tough. Um, you can see this is all material that was exploded out of a volcano and, and kind of uh, this lighter gray stuff is the ash as well. So a mixture of volcanic material that consolidated and squished together. And this is scoria, a vesicular igneous rock. You can see the vesicles. You can see the holes. Um, and then the last texture of igneous rock is glassy. Um, uh, obsidian is a great example of, uh, of uh, glassy um, extrusive igneous rock. Now, it's glassy uh, texture because it kind of looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, broken glass. Now, the reason that happens is that um, some magma has a high silica content. Remember back to the silicate minerals, the most common stuff in the crust. So depending on how much or little silica content is in that molten rock magma uh, can determine if we can get obsidian out of it, which doesn't happen often. So you have high silica magma, so a magma with a lot of melted silicate minerals in there, and it cooled so rapidly that crystallization cannot occur at all. All right. Oftentimes this has to do with somehow water being involved, whether it's groundwater, below ground, or surface water somehow. So the result of this high silica material cooling very quickly is this natural amorphous volcanic glass with no crystals, and it is obsidian. Um, yeah, it's, you know, obsidian, again, it's kind of a rare on how it forms, 
but again, it has to be a very high silica based magma. So a molten rock with a lot of silicate minerals melted in it. When that occurs, um, the more silicate minerals that are melted in magma, the stickier that magma is, the, the harder it is to flow. That means uh, it's viscous. It has a high vis viscosity. It doesn't really want to flow very well. Think like cold honey. Like it still can move, but it's a really slow moving uh, substance. So anyway, so you get this magma very rich in silica and it's very viscous. So it re resists flow. Um, when it does erupt, um, it would eventually high silica magma or I should say lava forms rhyolite. So when rhyolite lava erupts, the uh, any water that's kind of in here rapidly escapes. It's naturally low in water, but any water that is in there uh, rapidly escapes and the, the lava becomes so sticky, so slow moving that it prevents crystals from forming. One crystal, you know, some atoms of one, you know, element and one element or one compound, one mineral can't go find another one to eventually come together and grow bigger. So they're just kind of stuck in place. So everything's kind of stuck in place. So it forms this glass. All right, so those are six different textures of igneous rocks. Can they tell a story? They tell a story of an area, a volcanic area, or even what was happening below ground with uh, magma in this plutonic environment. The rocks tell a story. This is historical geology. We're trying to tell the story of Earth. Additionally, besides looking at the texture, which you can just kind of eyeball, you also can put together the chemical composition of an igneous rock to further tell that story. So igneous rocks can further be sub subdivided into three categories based on the silica content. This is getting into the chemical composition. Um, what's known as a felsic igneous rock is uh, a igneous rock that formed from cooled magma or lava that was high in silicate minerals. Very, very, a lot of those silicate minerals, very, you know, those common stuff that we talked about, high in silicate mi uh, minerals. And those minerals in general contain lighter, less he heavy elements, um, like uh, silicon, oxygen, aluminum, sodium, and potassium. And they just happen to be lighter in color because the compounds that those elements form are just the characteristics are lighter in color. So when you're looking at igneous rock, if you know it's igneous rock, even texture aside, if you're looking at the color and it's lighter in color, oh, it's felsic. Chemically, that means there's a lot of silicate minerals in there. Let me jump to the opposite of felsic is mafic. Mafic are very dark colored igneous rocks. And these are, uh, uh, mafic rocks are, are less rich in silicate minerals, and they tend to contain more heavier elements as magnesium, iron, calcium, when th those elements, just by their nature, when they chemically combine, are darker in color. So if I'm looking at a darker igneous rock, it's usually a little bit heavier, but that reflects the chemical composition, less silicate minerals. And then in between felsic and mafic, and I don't know if they just got lazy, but they just call them intermediate igneous rocks kind of in between. Uh, intermediate level of, of um, uh, silicate minerals, and they're also kind of intermediate in color. They're not light, they're not dark, they're kind of grayish, they're kind of in between. Uh, so if you're looking at a grayish, not light, not dark igneous rock that has an intermediate chemical composition, so kind of a me medium amount of, uh, of uh, silicate minerals. So now when we're classifying in general igneous rock, we have to look at texture and composition. Both we can kind of eyeball. Texture, how it looks, composition, we can assess the chemical composition kind of on the color. It's not always the case, but you can kind of just eyeball it and you can begin to tell the story. Um, again, um, chemical composition is based on uh, mineral composition, which you can eyeball from the color. Felsic lighter in color, and we say felsic, that's 65% or more of the rock is made up of silicate minerals. Um, intermediate, 53 to 65. Mafic, dark color, so 52 to 45%. And then you also get ultramafic rocks, like those that we see around ophiolites, um, that upper mantle material, and this tends to be less than 45% silica, so they tend to be extra dark, sometimes even a, a beautiful green, dark green color. Put it all together and you can find a chart like this. 
So looking at textures and looking at um, darkness increases, don't worry about specific gravity, and silica increases this way. So we can look at granite, which is a phaneritic igneous rock, visible crystals, so that means it cooled below ground, and it's felsic, meaning it gets high in silicate minerals. And if darkness increases this way, then lightness is this way. So it's lighter in color, a lot of silica, visible crystals. That's kind of how you use this. And you can see the um, chemical or the mineral makeup of granite. But remember, rhyolite, chemically, granite and rhyolite are the same exact thing. It's just rhyolite is aphanitic, it cooled above the surface. Granite, phaneritic, cooled below the surface. They're both felsic. They're both lighter in color, and they both have high silica content. Chemically, they're made up of the same exact amount of quartz, amount of feldspar, amount of plagioclase, amount of biotite, amount of hornblende. These are different minerals. Same thing with diorite andesite. Chemically, same thing. Just diorite cooled below ground, andesite cooled above ground. It's intermediate. They tend to be gray, gray in nature. Gabbro and basalt. They're very dark. As we go here, they're, they're dark, almost black. Um, so they're mafic, so um, less silica. And then peridotite doesn't have an aphanitic kind of cousin because peridotite, again, when we talked about ophiolites, you know, this is material coming from the upper mantle. And there really is no upper mantle material that makes its way to the surface and cools. So all we get is phaneritic, big visible crystal peridotite because that's where the, it doesn't move upwards. It's mantle material. It's not magma and lava, which is melted uh, crust material. So peridotite, ultramafic, ultramafic, very dark, or even sometimes into green. It's so dark, it's weird. <coughs> so very dark, very uh, low on, relative on the silica content. So that's kind of how you look at this kind of three-dimensional chart. <coughs> now... For some of those other um, textures, like the sicular, glassy, or pyroclastic, <coughs> excuse me, um, vesicular rocks, uh, scoria is darker, mafic, pumice is lighter in color, felsic. Now, that means, felsic means pumice has more silica, uh, more silicate mineral, scoria, less of it, all right? Um, obsidian. Obsidian's weird. Obsidian, it... It's dark in color, right? It's dark in color, but it's actually very high silicate mineral magma. So it's actually felsic. So obsidian is kind of a weird one, but it just cooled so fast. The minerals stay in place. Plus any, plus any, um, uh, 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 what did I refer to those as? Um, background minerals. Any, there's, um, what the heck did I call those? Hold on, let me pause real quick. Accessory minerals. Sorry, the, the name was escaping me. So um, obsidian, it's actually felsic. It's dark, so you would think it's mafic, but it's actually felsic. The reason it's so dark is that high silicate mineral magma or lava, when it cools, it also traps impurities, um, like those accessory minerals, to make it look look black. So, But in, in truth, it's actually chemically felsic. So i got to be careful there. And then um, tough or welded tough tends to be lighter in color, felsic. Um, that's because this is from uh, exploded uh, volcan volcanoes and exploded vol volcanoes that <coughs> explode violently tend to be fed by high silica, medium to high silica based magma chambers. So that material tends to be felsic as well. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So that's it for, um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, igneous rocks when we come back now let's talk about a different type of rock and continue to figure out well what story do these tell us and we'll talk about sedimentary rocks see you back here uh, in just a minute <laughs> 